All right, so you guys also had a quiz about um, diffusion, okay? So you had, and you're going to have lots of uh, situations like this where you need to be able to predict how things are going to move across a membrane or whether they're going to move across a membrane. So I'm doing this really, like, pretty garbage demonstration of a cell membrane. But here's our cell membrane, right? So it's made up of the head parts and then the tails parts pointed toward the middle. And what we have to remember about cell membranes is that some things can easily cross a cell membrane. They don't even see it as a barrier. And other things see it as an impenetrable concrete wall. And they're just not going to be able to get across it unless you dig them a tunnel, open them a gate, give them some way to pass. So whenever you're trying to predict whether something is going to cross a cell membrane, and if you can get this ability to predict whether things will cross a cell membrane, oh my god, physiology is going to become so much easier for you. So there's two things you have to ask when you're trying to look at something and say, can it cross a cell membrane? So you're going to ask, number one, is the membrane a barrier to this thing? Now, the reason we've been spending so much time on the chemistry stuff, trying to get you guys to the point where you can do, like, what kind of bond will they form? Will it be polar or nonpolar? Will the molecule be polar or nonpolar? Is so that you can do things like this. So you don't have to memorize your way through physiology. All right, so the way that we're going to answer this question is we're going to ask, is the substance that we're talking about nonpolar or polar molecule? All right? So, again... We have to think about whether bonds are polar, but then we also want to look at an entire molecule and say, okay, is this molecule polar or nonpolar? So does it act like a magnet or does it not? Now, if you have, so let's like just take an example. So if you have something that is polar, all right, so it's magnetic, what you're going to see in terms of behavior of this thing um, is like, let's say this is, well, we'll just say it's any polar kind of thing. Um, these things are going to bounce right off the membrane because the membrane is a wall to them. But if you have a nonpolar thing, a nonpolar thing can go right through the membrane because it's non-magnetic, so it's not messing around with these magnetic things on either side of the membrane, and it has no problem being in here. So the middle part of the cell membrane is a nonpolar environment. It's made out of fat, it's greasy, it's waxy. Other things that are nonpolar have no problem being in there. So they'll cruise right on through if that's where they're headed. So that's the first thing you need to know is, is the membrane even a wall to this thing? Or is it just going to cruise through and basically not even see it? All right, so let's take some of that stuff out. All right, so the situation that you had, so that's the first question. So you got to ask, can the thing cross the membrane or is the membrane a barrier? And then the second question is, um, is there a concentration gradient? So like with a lot of things in physiology, you're not being asked one question at a time. You're being asked to think about more than one thing. So first of all, is this cell membrane a barrier to the substance I'm interested in? And number two, once I've determined whether or not it can cross, with help or without help, is there a concentration gradient? So is there a pileup of this stuff in one area versus another? So if we take the example you guys had, so you had um, carbon dioxide, and we were picturing this situation. So I'll draw you some carbon dioxides. All right, so we got... Here's our carbon dioxides. This is kind of what they look like. Um, so you got a bunch of carbon dioxides, and whatever's been going on in the body, this cell has produced a lot of carbon dioxide. And that's pretty typical. If you've been, you know, working out hard or even just existing as a human being, your cell is going to produce a lot of carbon dioxide. So now you've got lots and lots of carbon dioxide that has built up. Um, your cell's been producing it. So here's, you know, this is inside the cell. And here's outside the cell. All right, so we know we're building up carbon dioxide. Here's our picture. So now first thing we got to ask is, is the cell membrane a barrier to this particular thing? Now we know that nonpolar things can cross the membrane as if it's not even there. Polar things are generally going to need a passageway. Polar things can't cross through the middle of this membrane. So we have to figure that out. So when we look at carbon dioxide, uh, when we look at a carbon dioxide, so I'll draw you one that's a little bit bigger. When you build this, you want to go back through and think about this particular molecule and how it's put together. Um, we get, when you work this out in terms of what kinds of bonds are there, you're going to get like 
you know, you'll be able to get like, okay, that's a slightly positive side and oxygens are pretty aggressive about electrons. So, you know, you might look at that, but like that and be like, oh my God, yeah, it's totally going to act magnetic. But the usual thing happens where we have to look at that molecule and say, can I draw a line through that molecule in any particular direction that will separate the positive charges and the negative charges and keep them on either side of the line? So we do the same thing we did last time. Well, if I try to do it like that, I've got negatives over here and negatives over here. So there's no way I can make this thing into a magnet. Um, if I try to do it a line through here, that doesn't fix it either. Like th there's just no way to draw this thing. So we can't do that. So if it doesn't, act, if it can't make it into a magnet, no matter how we slice it, then what we're looking at is we're looking at a bunch of nonpolar molecules. So carbon dioxide, these are all nonpolar molecules. So when you think about that, you're like, okay, so nonpolar molecules. So I had to, first I had to determine how do these things function? Are they polar or nonpolar? Okay, they're nonpolar molecules. So that means that nonpolar molecules are free to come and go. They can come in, they can go out. So this thing can go out, it can come back in again. It can go whichever way it wants to. So it's like the cell, the cell membrane is not even there in terms of how they move. They just cruise on through it as if it doesn't exist. So that's fine. So now we know carbon dioxide is free to move. But then the second question is, all right, is it going to move? And if it's going to move, like what would make it move? So the first thing you want to ask yourself about that, if you're being asked about diffusion, uh, you're being asked, is there a concentration gradient? Because diffusion is going to happen when you have a pile up of some particular substance in one place and not a lot of it in another place. So we've seen that simulation of as things are just bouncing around, crashing into each other, stuff tends to spread out. It tends to spread out until it's kind of equal everywhere, and then you don't see a whole lot of interesting stuff going at, after that point. So if you can find a concentration gradient, a pile up in one place, not a lot in another place, then you know that diffusion will occur as long as those molecules are free to move. Well, these molecules are free to cross the membrane if they want to. So if we've got a pile up of these carbon dioxides at this point, then once we've answered that question about whether they can cross so these guys, so let's like just summarize what we know about these things. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Yes, can cross. Yes, gradient. So once we know that, we know which way the gradient is kind of pointing, we know that we should be able to predict that these guys are going to start spreading across the membrane. So they're just going to be bouncing around. And eventually, if we come back in about 20 minutes, less than that, really, we would expect to find about equal numbers of these on either side of the membrane. So they're going to spread themselves out so they're equal on both sides. So that's just what things do with diffusion. You don't have to do anything about it. So we basically did not have to work hard to make this happen. We didn't have to work at all. They're free to move, and their concentration gradient is set up so that they will move. So yeah, this is happening in your cells all the time. Your cells don't have to work very hard to get the carbon dioxide to leave. As it builds up and builds up inside your cells, it just gradually drifts out because it's diffusing down its concentration gradient. So you still have to think about all those levels of, of chemistry thinking to get to this point. Yes, you can just memorize what carbon dioxide does inside a cell, outside a cell. You can memorize what oxygen does. But if you can build these molecules from scratch, then you've got the power to predict what anything will do. And that is unbelievably powerful. You can look at a drug that you've never seen before, and as long as you know how it's chemically put together, you'll be able to predict whether it can get into the cell and do its job or whether it can get out of the cell and do its job. That's a superpower in physiology. So I really want to encourage you guys to keep working at it. I've seen a lot of progress in terms of at least being able to say, okay, is this atom stable as it is? If it's not stable, it'll interact with this other atom. Maybe they'll bond. What kind of bond will it be? And we're building and building on those blocks to get you to the point where you can predict things like this. And then you become like a superstar in terms of physiology. And I know every single one of you is capable of getting to that point. But you gotta do a lot of these. You gotta practice them and practice them and practice them until they become natural. So that's the deal. You get another chance at these this coming week. Uh, practice with lots of different molecules, trying to predict what would happen, quiz each other, come see me, go to the tutoring center, do whatever you have to do in the time between the quizzes to get better at them. And you absolutely will.